Welcome to the channel everyone. Well, got the rear axle ready to go. Now we gotta deal with this front axle. Um, I don't have to do a disc brake upgrade, but the front axles on these, are, it's, they're more complicated than the rear. Um, you got uh, knuckles and you got a axle with a joint in there. And I believe them joints are trashed, unlike the 70, so I'm gonna have to go in there, I think replace those. Gotta clean it up, just like the rear one will get her painted. Probably some new brakes, new steering parts. So, yep, let's uh, get this thing going. Okay, so I gave this thing a bath. It's pretty well cleaned up. Took the wheels off and check this out. Is this gonna focus or not? Looks like a beaver was chewing on these these lugs. The wheel must have been loose. And it must have been loose for a while because it's got them them lugs just chewed up. I might take a picture, picture might show it better. But yeah, all the lugs ruined on this side. Got a pretty bad pinion leak. Pinion seals leaking on this one. Uh, unlike the rear end, I'm probably gonna have to do something about that because it's really running out of there. Um, I don't usually like to mess with those, but I have, I have done it. And then I'll, I'll count the, the threads and mark the deal there and try to get it exactly uh, where it was before. But yeah, it looks like that's gonna have to be, it's leaking pretty good down there. One more thing I've noticed in about this axle is the vent. I don't know where the vent is. I believe it's supposed to be right here. But I don't see a hole I don't see a hole where that goes uh, into the axle. Uh, I don't have a light right now, but yeah, I might have to do a separate video and see if someone knows where the vent is on these or whatever. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be the vent. I don't know why there's there's not a hole in there, but yeah, so. I gotta probably get this thing set up on some jack stands, get it nice and solid, cause I gotta take everything apart. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm a little concerned about this axle. Uh, the, the pinion seal was leaking pretty good, and I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but I can feel it. I do not like the feeling of that, that bearing at all, so. This, this axle might not be able to be just um, cleaned up and some seals. It might need something more, but I guess I gotta take it apart either way. Start with the, the brakes. And right now, I'm just gonna squeeze. I'm just squeezing the, the pads together just so I can it makes it easier to get the caliper off should have done this when the brake line was still attached and I wouldn't add such a mess
this bottom one is going to be stubborn on me. Okay, so I got the caliper off. This spins freely now. Just by the sound of that. I don't like the sound of that. This is probably going to need new bearings and everything. Threads are toast on this bracket anyway. Okay, getting getting rid of the steering next. And these bolts have cotter pins. And I know I'm not going to use this. So if the cotter pin fights me and I know I'm, I'm not going to use this junk, I'll just hit it. I'll just knock it off, just spin it right off at the impact. It's an inch and a sixteenth, which is an odd size for that. Again, I'm not using this junk, so I don't really care. Okay, so why don't I care about this steering? First off, it's bent really bad. Second off, these boots are inside out. I don't see any grease uh, in there at all. I mean, it's these, this, these parts are cheap enough that it's just best just to replace something if you don't know uh, if it's any good. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the the diff. I'm going to take this cover off because I'm, I'm really interested to see what's going on in there. It's pretty much going to decide what's going to happen here. Wow, someone has got this thing glued on. Wow. 
Look at the water in there. Ugh. Why is there so much water in there? That is interesting. Oh shoot, hope you guys saw the water. Wow, they got the silicone on there. Okay, so looking at this, at these gears, the gears don't look, the gears don't look too bad. I gotta get the numbers. I believe that says 79, which I'm thinking this is all factory. There's a big chunk right here. I don't know what that is. Looks like something fell in there. Um, I'll get a picture of it so you guys can see. I don't, it don't look very good. Uh, everything else seems to look... I mean, it seems to look okay. There's not a lot of backlash. But that the pinion bearing seems like it's looser uh, than it should be. There was a ton of water in this thing. I don't know if I did that. Or if that's the way it is because this vent hole here is open. And I just don't realize it is open. Okay, so I figured out how all the water got in the diff. Um, this this is the vent hole and I know there's no hole that goes straight down. It must go off to the side and it, it, I blew air through it. It goes into the differential. So I take it the nipple broke off or something uh, right here because this is the vent and when I washed the axle off, I think I filled it with water. So that's why uh, it had water in the differential. So I need to find a a new nipple or something for that so uh, I can plug that vent actually I got to put a hose on it alrighty guys let's disassemble this hub brakes get the knuckles out get the axle out gotta start with the locking hub I'm using a says it's a 530 seconds Allen to get these off I am replacing these these are original look like original Spicer locks but I've got something uh, a little better now for it if I ever get this axle back together. Every time I take something apart, I gotta replace something. Okay, so it's best to have a paper towel on the ground to be able to set all this stuff on. This also uh, the, 
gets pretty greasy. Now, uh, there's a snap ring in there that you gotta take off. You gotta find the end of it. Where is the end of it? That snap ring is right on the outer edge. It's not that easy to see. You need to get it out. I usually use a couple little screwdrivers. And even then, sometimes it's difficult to get out. Take a couple of bolts from your locking hub. Pull it out. And there's another another snap ring on the gear. That you gotta take off. There's a spring back there. There's that snap ring that was on the gear. And the rest of this will come out. There's a spring. There's a spring with it. Okay, so now you're gonna need this socket with four. It's a pretty common socket. Because you got a special, you got a special nut, and this thing is loose. That's not good. That is not good. This nut, that nut there is supposed to be torqued. So we either have, we got something wrong. I should have needed the a wrench to take that nut off. There's the nut you're looking for. That's the locking nut. And you got there's another It's like a It's like a locking washer thingy. I'll show it to you once I slide it off. There it is. It's got a slot that lines up uh, with the slot on the axle and then there's uh, holes in it. That correspond with holes on the second nut here that I'm guessing, yep, not even hand tight. So there's something wrong in here. Gonna need probably all new bearings and everything in here because these nuts 
shouldn't be this loose. These nuts should be tight. This one here, uh, you know, if it was hand tight, it wasn't. It was looser than hand tight. But this one here doesn't always require a wrench, but the other one should have. Might need new nuts. Uh, the locking deal might be messed up on the nuts there. Okay, so I just wanted to show these big nuts that uh, hold the bearing on uh, a little more in detail. Because uh, it's hard to see with them all full of grease. But here they are. And you can see there's, there's four notches on them. And that's why you need this special socket with four deals on them so it fits on the socket like that and you can turn that. Okay, so how do you know which one's, which one's the inside, which one's the outside nut? Well, the first nut that you stick on has a little a little tab on it right here that's that's the first nut that you install this nut actually you torque it down to preload the bearings and then you'll back it off uh, whatever the manual says I forget right now but this puts the preload on the bearings then comes this lock washer and you can see it's got holes in it some of the holes still have grease in it but it's got holes all the way around and then there's also a, a deal right here. You can see that right there. Now that lines up on the spindle. So you can only put it on one way. So you put that on the notch on the spindle and slide it on. And you got to make sure that one of the holes lines up with the notch on there. And that locks this nut. So it cannot move, okay? So what holds the washer there? Well, that's where this final nut comes in. And this is uh, run down and you torque this. I forget, but it's, it's a lot more than the other one. But you torque this down to a certain torque. And that locks this whole thing together. So it can't loosen up. The fact that this was all loose tells me that either someone didn't didn't lock it right, or that someone didn't do something right. They didn't torque something right. Uh, the bearings are, are aren't any good, or something. Something was wrong with these being loose because they're not supposed to be. So now uh, this should be free. The hub should slide off it. with the bearings and the seal back there gonna have to clean that all up get new rotors now you got the spindle right here and this one this one actually has grease on it Which is a good thing, except for the nuts weren't tight. The bang nuts. Which, not a good situation. So I'm going to take one second here, I'm going to cut the video, I'm going to vacuum all this crap out so I can get to the 
the nuts that hold the spindle. Um, it actually holds the spindle on and the backing plate for the disc brakes. Alrighty, we're back. I'm going to take these nuts off. They're 9 sixteenths. They're actually little flange nuts. So there's the dust plate. It actually holds the calipers too. And you got the spindle on there. And those usually don't just fall off. I think the book says to book says to hit it like that. I don't know if I've ever seen that work very well. I'm going to get behind it with a chisel here, nice and easy. That usually works. I don't know why this is being stubborn now. This is what you gotta be prepared for. A real fight with these.
Gee, that was a fight. There's needle bearings in there. I don't know if you can see them or not, but them are. Them look destroyed. They're falling out. There's a seal right here. You can see it's all destroyed. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the axle is now free. And there she be. This is the short one. Check out this joint. Destroyed. Okay, so all that's left is the knuckle itself. You got cotter pin on this castle nut here. Sometimes they don't come out. I'll just break them off so the, the, the nut, you can get the socket over the nut and just shear the cotter pin off. I'm not using these ball joints anyway. This is uh, actually an inch and seven sixteenths for the top one. And we've got an inch and an eighth for the bottom one. Now the bottom one, I know a lot of guys are going through here take it off. I got a short inch and an eighth impact socket on an extension. Actually works really well. You can get right in here with it off to the side. And usually that'll break it loose. And it did. This is just a, there's no cotter pin with the bottom one. It's a, uh, I guess what they call a locking nut. So the bottom one's off, top one. Losing my tools. And then, should be a few taps away. Tap on that bottom one a little bit. Usually that knocks them loose. This one is fighting me. Okay, this one's gonna fight. Yeah, she's a fighter. She goes.
I can beat on this ball joint because I'm replacing it. But there you go, guys. She is disassembled. Okay, so I'm on the driver's side right now and you got a steering arm attached to the knuckle. And I wanted to take that off uh, before I took the the knuckle off the axle because usually this thing these things are a bear to take off they got these little inserts and they usually weld themselves right right on but actually this one uh, some blaster a little bit of heat and it it popped popped off just a couple taps of the hammer here um, and it's it's ready to come off right right now so um, I've struggled with those in the past like I said usually they are real bare to get off but this one this one's gonna come right off so I gotta pull these out lift this off and then I can pull this knuckle off okay so there's the axle pretty much all disassembled except for the the gears and stuff like that I'm thinking I probably should go in there and, and put new bearings in there but I mean it's gonna cost it's gonna cost quite a bit of money um, you're talking I right now I need ball joints bearings uh, wheel bearings uh, brakes calipers uh, you know and then the bearings for the differential and then if I do that I, I do need a few tools that I don't have to be able to uh, mess with the bearings in, inside that differential so yeah uh, it might take me a little while to, to finish this axle up so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna end the video I'm gonna break this up into a few different parts I think uh, this will be kind of the disassembly and when I get some more done, I'll, I'll do some more video. We'll, we'll either do the differential there or I'm going to start cleaning this up and, and putting it back together. But we'll see. That's going to do it for this one, guys. I'll see you.